Welcome to On Report, Sporting Chance Magazine's Football Media Review Panel. Or as we like to call it, the real MRP. Joining me tonight to follow in the famous footsteps of Don Chips to keep the AFL honest is Chief Sports Writer of Sporting Chance Magazine, William Stanley Street, and Cross Communicator and Media Advisor, as well as the co-founder of Sporting Chance Magazine, James Fitzpatrick. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Definitely. Glad to be here. And so, for our first topic of the evening, trending topics, and tonight's trending topic is, of course, the omnipresent and obviously very important AFLX. <laughs> so, despite a plethora of pre-season articles, time trials, and of course, legitimate competition in the AFLW, the AFL introduced uh, to us its latest craze, the AFLX. And so, love it if you were an AFL executive or loathe it, if you were a footy fan with eyes, the AFLX is apparently here to stay after it exceeded expectations, whatever those might be, from the AFL. And like kids buzzing from certain flavours like galactic grape or space pineapple, the effects of AFL are as lasting as the sugar content in its naming sponsors' tubes. Traditionalists lamented the fact that it involved no pressure racks, no tackling, no kicking to contests, no high-flying marks or anything else that resembled somewhat of a football game, but apparently, during to study exams and everything else, it was a raging success from the AFL CEO, Gil McLaughlin. So, let's quickly go through the good, the bad, and the ugly from AFLX this week. And so to begin with, the good. And obviously the only person who can find the AFLX any good is a marketer. And this one was the marketer, who is the professor of marketing from RMIT, Con Starvos, who said the AFL is very good at keeping their brand in the news 24-7, 365 days a year. They become absolute masters at it. Someone else who is a master at it is, of course, you, James. How do you think this plays out as a marketing ploy from the AFL? Well, I think it's, um, as a marketing, a pure marketing strategy, it's a good one. And my my sort of gold star for this segment um, goes to Nick Place, from the uh, a writer from the New Daily. And I think he hits the nail on the head here when he says, um, here's the thing, footy fans, it's not about you. So... He's not about, it's not for footy traditionalists, and it never was. And he goes on to say, AFLX is not a replacement for tri traditional a AFL rules, just as AFLW is complementary offering to the AFL. The fact is, part of the league's job, like any business, is to search for growth and new markets. This is why Port Adelaide and the Suns played an official game in China last year. And I think he's bang on. That's exactly what they're doing here, and looks like they're doing it well. There you go. You're, you're a footy fan, Will. Is this lived up to your expectations, or do you even need this product? Oh, I don't need it at all. I would be just as happy with the old, what was it, the NAB uh, official preseason. Um, I think, I, I think I get it. I get why they're doing it. Um, square field, you can take it into Asia. The soccer's huge in Asia. That's the market the AFL really wants to hit because they know there's just a massive audience there. I understand it. I mean, but. Anytime there's a competition run and Melbourne wins it, clearly it's broken. Um, there's just, it's just not entertaining. I found myself, I turned it on and then actively searched for something else to watch. But uh, I mean, power to them. Like, like you said, it's a good marketing ploy. It's working. We're talking about it. Yeah. So I want to know. You, you say it's not entertaining um, for a footy traditionalist like yourself. Mm. I wonder if it's entertaining to the target market that they're trying to hit. Well, but who is the target market they're trying to hit? Well, I'd love the AFL to come out and tell us that. Because, like, like it, w it wasn't televised in Asia. It wasn't televised in, in Europe. You know, mm. All these other countries that have rectangular fields. And if, and if it was, they're not going to be like, oh, wow, what's going on here? I think it's, it's going to be taken as an exhibition game. So yeah. it'll be one of those things that uh, probably this time next year, oh, actually more off-season next year, we'll see probably the couple of winning teams going and doing a couple of exhibition matches probably across Asia, early days. Um, obviously China's the big one for, for the AFL um, so we'll probably see all-star teams going over there much in the same way we get the international rules um, series it's a bit of fun and it's just opening up the market so I, I think yeah it, it's working for their goals clearly because it's exceeding expectations whether or not they've seen it yet no, who knows and I love that because I'd love to know what their expectations are they've come out and said that it's exceeded expectations haven't they yeah that's correct yeah Yeah, but no one knows what they don't what those no idea I believe the first expectation was to find a match ball that you could see and they really they, they've propped that up with the grey one and then they're back to the yellow one so <laughs> double tick there 
Yeah. Double tick. All right. Even though they failed. <laughs> yes. So the, the silver ball did not live up to expectations. Yeah. The rest of AFL. It was very did. agile and innovative, and it failed fast. It failed fast and recovered quickly. Jobs and growth. Jobs and growth. Malcolm would be proud. But not everyone had glowing reviews for the AFLX, and so tonight's bad is from Offsiders columnist Richard Hines, who did not hold back in saying that the AFLX is the first attempted use of Victoria's new voluntary euthanasia laws. So please send your bereavers noticements and donations to cover the rights lost the AFL will never regain, uh, care of Grandstand Radio and the ABC. Guys, do we think that uh, it was a blight in the game? Do we, are we that disgusted by the presence of AFLX? I'm not disgusted. I think it's it's uh, a sport. I love sport. It's it's not my favourite game, but I don't hate it as much as oh, I think I saw this the other week. They played a five five over match in Abu Dhabi at a there was a professional league. So I mean, there's always worse places it can go. Uh, does it need to be euthanized? No. The offsiders columnist has he burnt that bridge? Probably. Yeah, I'm, I'm not disgusted at all. I mean, it, it, it's got no real effect in my mind on traditional AFL. Yeah. So why why do we care? It's just more AFL. Um, perhaps, you could like just not watch it. Yeah. And we a lot of us have taken those steps. <laughs> yeah. And we've seen. I wonder how clubs feel about it. I mean, they've come out mostly in support of it, and I suspect they probably received an infamous memo again <laughs> from AFL House. Um, but. They're sending young players to it. They're not sending their stars, so they probably don't really care that it, that they have to be a part of it. Um, maybe one day we'll see the same argument that we've seen in uh, cricket, where people are saying, "Oh, T Twenty cricket's ruining um, players for Test cricket." Um, is AFL X going to affect uh, traditional AFL players for the regular season? No. no. So then, why do we care? Correct. And finally, tonight's ugly. And he is one never to miss out an opportunity to give uh, a minority group or an outsider's view a little bit of a drive-by, a little bit of a whack. And therefore, tonight's ugly is the Herald Sun's John Ralph gave a whole generation of footy fans a massive whack, saying the AFLX was never about attracting the purists. It is about winning over the Xbox generation and the millennials who are lured by other entertainment. It is footy for the Twitter generation. And unfortunately for him, that Twitter generation came out in force in attacking him both there and on a little thing called Reddit. Guys, do we think that the Twitter generation is to blame for things like AFLX, T20 cricket and the like? God, no. <laughs> That's a very long bow to draw. <laughs> I love it when uh, established uh, white men in their 40s, 50s? Yeah, yeah. 40s, 50s, yeah. Uh, just start get confused by things they don't understand and label it all as a generational issue. It's yeah. fantastic. It's fun to watch. Uh, it gets trotted out probably daily through the Herald Sun. Uh, it's just a load of crap, isn't it? Realistically, they're trying something new. We get it. You don't like it. That's fine. Trying to say that it's because people have short attention spans? No. I'm out. I and the best part it. of that is that the people that play these sports, Test Cricket's the obvious one It goes for five days. No one who's playing Test Cricket... Is not a millennial, really. Like they're all our age. They're all part of that millennial generation that should have should have given up on cricket because they were too busy playing with their hoozy flitzits and and what's my calls it and that kind of thing. I can't so, wait to get my yeah. hands on a hoozy flitzit. <laughs> yeah, correct. Well, just yeah. it's latest it's latest attraction on Rick and Morty. Yeah. So that's all I had. I think this comment belongs back in the early two thousands. Yeah. yeah, it's well and truly outdated. Yeah, we mentioned earlier that uh, the AFL um, had expectations going into the yeah. a- a- AFLX. And that they're now going to review that. Yeah. Um, review do we, expectations. Do we know uh, how this review is going to take place? Oh, they're going to do a survey of uh, the coaches, the players, the fans, the broadcasters, and the sponsors. Right. Uh, and the executive. And the executive, too. <laughs> I'm sure. It'd be one of those weighted surveys. So, yeah. like, fans get allotted probably 0.001 percent. Yeah. Percent, I'll vote. And then, like, AFL executive. And whoever runs the accounts department probably gets a lot of 95%. Yeah. And then you yeah. step down from there. Yeah. So similar to uh, when AFL House reviewed their handling of the Essendon drug saga. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, where the chief reviewers were employees of the AFL House. Yeah. Objectivity is paramount. Yeah. yeah. Are we going to see the same thing here? Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll add that to another notch in the bad column. Mm, for AFL definitely. Office. Outsource it to us. And that leads us perfectly to our second segment, which is, of course, tonight's tribunal hearings. 
although this season is still over a month away, there have been plenty of activity, both in football news media and on the social media, for us to see two media offenders sitting in front of the media review panel today. And our first offender is for committing a terrible tweet. After Collingwood captain Scott Pendlebury tweeted on Thursday, who's looking forward to footy being back on the screens tonight? Pendlebury was in hot water with the Twitter's AFLW supporters for his tweet about the return of football, as the Magpies AFLW team has been playing televised games which have been screened on Channel 7 and 7 Mate since February the 2nd. Now guys, what do we make of this? Was it careless or intentional? How was the impact? Was it a headshot or a body blow? What do we think should happen with Scott Pendlebury? I think that's a classic case of careless, unintentional body shot, I reckon. This is a Dropped, dropped in a bit too early, hip and shoulder. He's probably he's due a week for that. I think um, it's it's probably one of those ones where at, at uh, Collingwood, someone's whipped around and said, "Hey guys, AFLX is on. Make sure you're on your socials promoting it." And Scotty's been on the couch and thought, "Oh, do I have to watch this? Better tweet about it. <laughs> Chuck something out there. Gets a bad response." I hope to God he's been watching the AFLW. If he hasn't, then that's terrible form. But uh, yeah, no, this is this is one week for me. I must say that it's a good ploy by the Collingwood social media team if it is, because he gets great engagement on his tweets. Mm. He has like something like ten thousand votes, all in the yes column. So just that's like, very interesting. Just like sporting chats media. Yeah, yeah, correct. And I think I agree. And I think his lawyer would come out and say, "Look at all the tweets that he posted immediately after, um, backtracking." So I think we can quite he easily more. we can quite easily conclude that it was that was uh, nearly guilty careless, plea. yeah, correct. careless so, but unintentional. So under the uh, rules of the MRP given to us by the AFL, of course, careless, low, and body would see him receive a base sanction fine of one thousand five hundred dollars, a payable in cash, check, or card. But I would I would, <laughs> I would offer up a uh, different approach to this one. I'd say to you, Scott Penelbury, to make up for your slight gap on Twitter. Head down to the next home AFLW game for the Magpies. Maybe send a little tweet saying I'm going to be there. Sign some autographs, create some hype, and maybe donate, I don't know, a full day's pay to your AFLW sisters to help them out with some better training facilities, some more coaching time, and maybe some recovery on the day after the game. Close that wage gap. Can I throw out an optional extra to the court? Oh, yes. Please Um, do. So, in my opinion, Pennell's been an AFL player rather than... uh, a journo per yeah. se. He doesn't have a journalism degree. He's mm-hmm. not a, a media um, person. person. Um, should he be just judged less harsh than we judge the media on the MRP? No, because he is the captain. So he has actually does play a prominent role in the media. He also has his own podcast with John Ralph, who is a Herald Sun chief football writer. So he's very present in the media. So I think he knows the he knows the influence and effects of his tweets, of his comments, of his media clout. And I feel like he wants to move in that direction post his football career as well. So he needs to learn early. He needs to learn hard. And I think you know the uh, no the judgment today will be uh, it, will, it will be fair. So are we drawing a line in the sand? Are we setting precedence for the future courtroom battles here that AFL players will be judged with the same penalties uh, on the the media review panel as media and journos? Yes, absolutely. And second, and finally on tonight's list, is a common offender. This time for crimes against commentary committed by our good friend, Brian BT Taylor. Where are we? (laughs) Boy, oh boy. BT was thrown in the very deep end on Thursday night when he was suited up to take charge of Fox Footy's coverage of the first ever night of AFLX. And him, like most others, were a tad confused about who some of the players were, uh, how AFLX actually worked. But unlike the punters or subscribers to Fox Footy, the AFL Live Pass, or just following along on Twitter, BT's actually paid to know this stuff, and at the very least should research some of these things. So here are some of the lowlights from BT's performance. Uh, he forgot that the A-League was playing during the summer when saying that the ground they were playing on, Hyde Marsh Stadium, was uh, left abandoned during the summer months. Although the fact that Adelaide United had to play on that same torn up ground the very next day. Uh, he wrote off a player's career after 10 minutes of AFLX footy, saying that Prickaselli looks quite uncomfortable at this level. Whatever level that is, we're not quite sure, and it maybe could have been blamed just on the silver ball. He's, in general, overzealous BT-isms, such as labelling players Zupa specialists, despite the fact that a Zupa goal didn't exist up until three days ago. So again, what's our take on this? Intentional? Careless? What's the impact? 
Uh, look, before I uh, pass judgment on BT, I want to declare a conflict of interest to the court. Um, as BT's commentary in the past has already caused me emotional and physical injury, um, I wonder, in the match review panel, um, would you allow someone who's been kicked in the face by Toby Green to judge future Toby Green infringements? I'd say a yes. 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 Yeah. You probably are the because perfect, perfect it, person to judge. There is, <laughs> <there's> <laughs> a, it's got... a zero-sum game. We can't find anyone untouched by BTisms. There's no, There's nobody out there who can bring an impartial view to this. Everybody's heard him scream at the scream at the commentary. The wowies, they come thick and fast, James. You're he you're added, added twelve hundred yeah. syllables to Horatio Fantasia's name. Like. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, I will pass judgment, and uh, my judgment is careless. Uh, ignorance is bliss, but high impact. Ooh, I was. I would go with the opposite. I'd say intentional. Uh, paid to be there. Does he know what he's doing though? <laughs> He doesn't know what he's doing, so some of them. So I think some of the events, like not knowing a player, uh, who some of the players are, that is, that's careless. Yeah. It's, it's reckless, but yeah, it's not, it's not a deliberate act. I don't think he's going in deliberately forgetting them after he's learnt them. He probably just hasn't learned to begin with. But Zuber Specialist. That's... But Zuber Specialist is a blatant and obviously intentional act. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I, I think, too, we've got to look at high impact here. Yeah. Uh, because... As we discussed earlier in the show, we're appealing to different fan bases here. We're trying to appeal to soccer fans. And he's just gone and Toby Green them in the face um, by ignoring the fact that uh, their game exists. Yeah. And it's being played at that at that ground, probably to those people watching the very next yeah, day. Very so true. massive tick for the uh, marketing ploits of Mr. BT there. Mm. Uh, and the contact, is it a headshot or a body blow? I think it's still a body blow. It's only AFLX. Body blow because I suspect BT is going to still get worse from here. Yes. Uh, so we've got to get, we've got to set a base. We can't level. we can't ramp it up. We can't. <laughs> That's very true. So if we go through the metric again, uh, it's intentional. It's high and it's a body blow. Uh, the base sanction for that will be three matches with an early plea of going down to two, which would see BT miss out on the rest of the JLT Cup series. Now, oh, no. do we want to see this or do we want to see him? Uh, maybe do the JLT Cup to get back into form and then miss the first two rounds of the AFL just so we get off to the AFL and a good start. I have another solution, yes. another suggestion for punishment. Uh, pu- his punishment could be just do AFLX and, uh, and become- JLT and then not do anything else. He would become a Zuper specialist. Zuper specialist. <laughs> <laughs> the Zuper specialist himself. And uh, yeah, the old space pineapple Brian Taylor. I like it. Pretty much the equivalent to life in jail, no parole. <laughs> so, we've made our judgments tonight from the MRP, but unfortunately, too often in sport we get caught down in the negative. So our next segment is going to be Gold Star Stickers. So, to overcome that overwhelming negativity that we find in the sporting media landscape, we're going to uh, ask our good friend James Fitzpatrick to sprinkle some positivity on this show. So James, take it away. So the idea behind this segment com- comes from perhaps the, uh, the suggestion that the match review panel for the AFL um, should use a little bit of positive reinforcement. Uh, so perhaps awarding gold stickers uh, like you do in primary school to players like Toby Green uh, for going a week without a possible infringement. Um, in short, I think they should. So we're going to do the same uh, on this segment. segment. My first gold star goes to James Magnuson, the Olympic swimmer, for the courage to call this one out. So he's quoted in the Herald Sun on 15th of February saying uh, that there's a double standard uh, in how winter and summer Olympians are judged. Uh, and he's quoted saying, it seems to have a more laid back, laid back, relaxed feeling. They're listening to music during the event. They have sponsors on board. The summer Olympics uh, is a super professional, super intense environment. None of that is allowed. Uh, you're not ex- expected to show personality or have fun. You're there for one reason, and that is to win gold. They, the winter athletes, uh, take a different mental approach, and as a result, uh, we, the public and media, judge them less harshly as we would a summer Olympian. What do you guys think? Uh, I completely agree. Great, great use of the gold star. Good job, James, coming, coming out saying something in the media. I always like it when uh, particularly ripped athletes prove that they have something between the years. Always good to see. Um, but uh, yeah, he's right, for sure. We judge it very differently. Uh, I think, if nothing else, Australia expects some victories in the Summer Olympics, especially in the pool. Um, we've always 
been pretty well we've always got the bulk of our gold medals from the pool and there's big big expectations on on those uh, men and women to perform but uh not so in the winter olympics we have what four skiable mountains in australia um almost all of our athletes spend the majority of their lives overseas anyway and uh I mean, the, the real big one was Alyssa Cameron all those years ago when she, but she was a success story. Yeah, definitely right. It's uh, judged very differently. I think you also need to extend this out to all sports. See, like the football, as we said, the football media landscape is just horrendously negative. You know, my team's the worst, this player's the worst, I can't believe you missed that kick. And it always comes from people that don't actually do any of the events. I think, especially at Olympics time, you often get people going like, oh, curling, stupid, I could do curling. And then they try and do curling, and they really out they can't. Mm. So like these these athletes have got to a, to the top one percent of their sport. They're out here competing, and I think we need to get used to that. Like no one's coming out to your workplace, whatever it is, telling you, "Oh, you're not a very good accountant. You wouldn't be in the one percent of accountants. I could count the pants off you." And so it's just because obviously we care. We're a little bit jealous, I think, of their you know elite, exciting talents. And we need to just kind of relax a little bit and realize that you know they play sport to enjoy it. They want to win, obviously, but at the end of the day, it's entertaining for us to watch. And that's part, maybe the main part of why it actually exists. It is also a particularly ridiculous set of events, the Winter Olympics. It's fantastic. I love that they ski and shoot guns. That's fantastic. The, uh, and I think it's actually the exact opposite of what you were saying before. We, I can never imagine myself doing most of the events in the Winter Olympics. It's so far removed from what I think I could ever achieve. Like the... Um, the what is it the the long jump? Oh my god! The super go, G. Oh, they go so far. Uh, Matt, uh, who? How do you get into that? At what point are you like? You know what? I reckon I could jump this couple of hundred meters. It'd be fine. <laughs> the other amazing yeah. part too, there is you hear a, like post race or post event interviews, and sometimes they actually just go like they go, oh, how do you feel about that time? They go, oh, look, James, I was just really happy to survive. Yeah. Like I was, I'm just really glad that I'm still alive after doing the super G. And they're like, okay, probably stop doing that. And I think that's also perhaps why we're why we like it more, or we're more positive about um, the the Winter Olympics, uh, is that you got to the end of the course, uh, <laughs> you survived, you didn't die doing what you were just doing. Double T. Um, so should we take this same approach, this more relaxed, this more positive approach to reporting um, that we've seen in the Winter Olympics? Should we be taking that to all other sports? Definitely. Definitely. In which case, I'm giving Magnuson his gold star for calling this one out. Second gold star or gold sticker goes to our very own Jack Bannister, a uh, sporting chance, in a recent uh, People's Game podcast. And uh, I know it's not good practice um, to judge your, your own team um, like the AFL does, uh, review their own uh, uh, accomplishments. And accomplishments. Um, we criticised them before for doing that, but I'm going to do it now anyway. Uh, Jack, uh, the other day, insinuated that AFL House should have sent a memo to the gods um, for making it rain and slowing down the AFLW. Yeah, good good call from Jack. Um, AFL clearly need to up their memo game. They've uh, clearly slipped a little bit. They need to make sure they're really prepping bomb, whoever the weather god is. I assume you, you run through your, your standard re- <laughs> Greek, yeah. Roman gods. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, good on you, Jack. I agree. Gold star for him. And uh, I'm a big fan of reviewing my own work. Uh, nobody's going to celebrate the wins like for us, like I will. And I think just in general, more memos would be great for you. If I want to see memos on everything, I want to see memos on uh, do we need white shorts? Should we, the home team wear different coloured shorts? Uh, I want to see memos on crowd attendances. Did people not get told the game was on? I want to see memos on silver footballs. Like, whose idea was that? And I want to see a memo on that one. Uh, I want to see a memo on football Twitter. Why aren't enough gifts? Diet, dietary requirements of the players. I want memos of everything. I want, yeah, we want just memos on everything. Just increasing um, amount of memo... Uh, correlate to increasing transparency uh, uh no. depends on the memo no i so think it's, no. i think it's probably just white noise, <laughs> white noise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hiding uh, hiding the little piece of yeah. uh, darkness in the mass of paper. it would it would create the ultimate uh segue in, in harsh interviews there so gil tell us about what the this catastrophe that happened in afl house today oh well you would have seen that in the memo about the uh pizzas and the popcorn that we're giving out for free on sunday like, that's what's going to happen with more memos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Okay. We've gone deep down the memo lane, <laughs> but we're still going to give a gold star to uh, old Jack Bannister. Well done. Well done, Jack. And my final gold star uh, goes to the Australian media as a whole. It's, just, it's a very rare, and actually, I'm going to have a lot of gold stickers to give out <laughs> yeah. this one. 
Uh, but I was very impressed uh, in the wake of the Barnaby uh, bonking affair in Australian politics uh, that uh, football journos didn't come out and criticise Gill for his lack, lack of bonking ban in the, in the AFL house uh, post the executive uh, affair of a couple of months ago. I know a few sports journos and I can guarantee that none of them want a bonking ban anywhere near their coats. So... Uh, Otherwise, we'd have nothing to talk about. <laughs> is this commonplace in the in, in the journo world, is it, Wilbur? Oh, bonking bands, talking about them, for sure. Yeah, right, okay, good. But yeah, no, I'm impressed that they managed to... Uh, nobody's made that correlation yet. I think, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's uh, because they're withholding it or they just haven't made that jump yet. So um, I assume come Monday morning, we'll probably see on back page of the Herald Sun, why hasn't Gil got a bonking band? <laughs> And I suspect we will then be dragged in front of us <laughs> yeah. for raising and making this connection yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next week. So, uh, Gil, get that bonking band going, mate. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll take the uh, we'll take payment for that. Thank you, Herald Sun, for uh, tomorrow's headline. That's all my gold stickers for this segment. And so, to round out the first episode of the MRP is a segment by popular demand called Merch Madness. So each week on Merch Madness, our producer, Jangles, will bring to us his latest findings in the bizarre world of footy stuff. Whether that's knickknacks, or other bizarre kitsch, or just plain ugly sweaters. So this week, it's the ball the AFL should have used instead of the Sil- Silver Sharon. The Calumny Sharon. Uh, is the first colouring style AFL football ever produced by Sharon. It's team specific, with uh, coordinating uh, colourable outlines, and gives you uh, a set of washable pens so you can colour any way you choose. Uh, it's a soft touch football so you can play indoors and outdoors. And you can uh, scrub the whole thing off and start again. Meaning that if you have white boots, they'll be multicoloured by the end of play. Uh, so lads, the colour me Sharon. Is it uh, on your wish list? Will it be added to your guest list? Or is it going to be uh, straight to the $2 shop or NQR? Let me keep this short. You're adding to the plastic waste in the ocean. I mean, yeah. I said it's not plastic. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, yeah. General landfill. I can't imagine there's going to be too much demand for the old colour me, Sharon. So you, uh, nieces and nephews, like little five-year-old nieces and nephews, footy nuts, but maybe an artistic flair. You're not going to give them a little colour me, Sharon? You raise a good point, and this goes back to our first segment today, uh, that perhaps it wasn't uh, built with us as the target market yeah. in mind. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. Uh, I mean, I do love a good soft sharing. There's nothing better than playing sports indoors with the high-risk, high-reward situations. Yeah. Nothing like kicking a footy round when there's glassware near. Um, but at the same time, it's just going to mark the wall. Although, not only that, it is, it's washable. So every time it hits the wall, there will be like a cat's logo just like <laughs> smeared in like cheap texture across the wall. So <laughs> I mean, Christmas, Christmas Day is taking a whole new effect. Yeah, I'm feeling something like AFL Z coming on here. <laughs> Indoor <laughs> AFL, lounge room AFL, oh. Zuper Dupers and Maxi Bonds alike. Yeah. <laughs> Done deal. No, nah, gets, a, gets a double tick from me. Well done. They always find a good way to ruin something that we love. <laughs> and on that note, that's the end of the Media Review Panel for this week. Thank you, Will. Thank you, James. And remember, if you believe that someone from the football world deserves to go on report, please hit us up via our Facebook page or on Twitter using the handle at SC underscore mag underscore Oz. <laughs>